Hello there everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to share with you a new recipe for a huckleberry tart. I know it doesn't seem exactly like the right time of year for this, but it's uh, a part of a tradition that I've made for myself over the last, I don't know, quite a few handfuls of years, where when it's the end of winter and I am so looking forward to spring and summer, I craft something from those months. So starting in the summer months, I gather up berries and or flowers and plants, things that I really love and want to hold on to, and I'll freeze them or dry them to keep for this time of year. This way, when I get to those final days of winter where that fatigue is really hitting and I am just so in need of spring and light and warmth and colorful joy, I can bring a little bit of that back into my space through something that tastes of that time. I've done this with blueberries, I've done this with blackberries, with calendula, with roses, and this year I'm doing it with huckleberries. This recipe can be done with other berries of your liking. I would say it's probably best done with something a little bit tart, uh, but if it's not, you can kind of tweak the recipe to suit your needs and what you have on hand. But it was something that brought me a lot of joy and maybe you'll be in a similar boat or maybe you can look forward to the summer months where uh, there's a harvest to be had. I do think I want to experiment with this recipe a little bit more come summer and uh, try to tweak it a few ways and have some fun with it. And if I come up with a recipe that I enjoy more than this one, then I will share another in the months to come. But for now, I'm very pleased with this. It was a big hit with my friends and I hope it's something you can enjoy as well. So let's get into it, shall we? First and foremost, this recipe focuses on huckleberries. They are a beautiful berry and I used the red ones. The blue ones are a little sweeter and this recipe can be made and tweaked in certain ways depending on how tart you'd like the tart to be. Huckleberries are a really fascinating, uh, beautiful plant, especially in magic and folklore. They tie very strongly to luck and protection and due to the ties that they have, I think that they make fierce loving protectants, and those are some of my favorite to work with. I think they take care of you in a much better way, and you can really feel that come through in their magic and in their food. So if you're looking for a purpose to work with them or bake this, luck or protection would be great. They are also perfect as something just to enjoy. So to craft this huckleberry tart, you'll need, for the filling, two cups of berries, half a cup of brown sugar, half a lemon, juice, and zest, two tablespoons of cornstarch, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg, and two tablespoons of chopped butter. For the crust, you'll need two cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, 10 tablespoons of butter, two egg yolks, four tablespoons of water, and one tablespoon of cinnamon sugar. In addition to this, you'll also need a bit of egg wash and extra cinnamon and sugar for topping. In the first recipe I did, I used white sugar, and I do think it would benefit from the warmth of brown sugar, so I shifted it here. And the extra bits that you'll use, the egg wash and the extra cinnamon and sugar, are things that you probably won't need to prep outside of the recipe. The egg wash is something that you will create, um, kind of, while making the crust, and if you just keep it set aside, you can use it as a topper. Same with the cinnamon sugar as we're adding it in and I don't know about you, but I always like to have a lot on hand. To begin the recipe, we start with the filling. This is pretty straightforward. Take your berries and add them to a bowl. Then toss in the sugar. You may want to add more or less depending on how tart you'd like it to be or how tart your berries are. Then add the lemon zest and juice. 
along with the cinnamon, salt, nutmeg, and cornstarch. The top butter that's a part of the filling will be saved for a little bit later in the recipe. Once you have this all beautifully mixed and combined, set it aside and begin on your crust. This again is very straightforward and just involves putting it all together. Begin by adding your flour and salt. And make sure to add in your one tablespoon of cinnamon sugar. Then chop up your butter into small cubes. Having the butter in small cubes makes it much easier to mix into the recipe. Work to add the butter into your flour and salt mixture just with your fingertips, pinching it all together until there aren't any big pieces anymore. Then take two egg yolks and four tablespoons of cold water. Mix them together to create basically an egg wash and add it in slowly. Mix in only enough until your crust is coming together fully. It is very likely that you won't need to use all of this mixture. Set aside the remaining egg yolk water mixture to use to brush on top of the crust right before putting it in the oven. Once your dough is fully formed, sprinkle some flour on a flat surface and begin to push down your dough in a circular fashion. Flatten it as well as you can with your hands and then begin to roll it out with a rolling pin. I like to get my dough as flat as possible, so go as long as you can and make sure to seal any cracks that form as you go. Once it's flat, roll the dough out onto a pie tin and add your berries in. Once this is done, add in your chopped butter to the top of the filling. As it's a tart, I don't do anything too fancy with the crust, but feel free to make it exciting if you wish. I simply tear off the excess crust and then fold it over on itself. Do an egg wash around the edge of the crust and sprinkle over it with some remaining cinnamon and sugar. Then cover the entire thing with foil and pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. Once these 20 minutes are up, pull off the tin foil and put it back in for another 20 to 25 minutes. You want to make sure that the filling has enough time to cook and congeal, and that time should be pretty good. Once it's looking beautiful, pull it out of the oven, allow it to cool, and enjoy. This recipe brought me and my friends a lot of joy, and I hope that it can do the same for you. I am so looking forward to spring. This is something that is holding me over until those days truly begin. It is just around the corner here. I'm very grateful that I get to share it with you. You can see more of the process on my other channel if you're interested. I will link the video that that's in down below. If you can and would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share art, herbal profiles, book recommendations, and monthly workshops of your choosing. And again, if you want to check out my other channel, there you can find more herbalism, magic, nature, all those fun things. It's more creative and I absolutely love it over there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you again soon.